Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video follow-up today uh, with the Astron BB30M. This is the uh, device right here that uh, I did in a previous video and uh, what it's for is to hook up to your power supply for your radio and a battery and it will cut over to battery in case your uh, mains power drops. So I, when I did the video I kind of just did a review of it. I bought this, I own this and did a review of it but I didn't hook everything up and uh, ultimately this is going to be hooked up in the house on my on my uh, main HF radio set but I have a test set up here today and this is laid out so we can kind of see what is actually happening so right now uh, I'm on mains power and I have a battery meter hooked up and let's see if I can zoom in where we can actually read that and as you can see we're pulling zero amps zero watts out of the battery this is hooked to the battery through to the battery side of the Astron device and the way this is wired up is this is um, positive and negative for the battery that is positive and negative for the radio so that's a common right there in the center and then these are the two separate hots battery hot and hot to the radio and then in the back of this is our power coming from our power supply from our 12 volt power supply <clears throat> and I have a oh I don't know a R, an RNL Electronics RLP 350M power supply is what I've got this hooked into so uh, and I apologize this is kind of awkward to film so right now we are on mains power and I am hooked up to uh, my hotspot with this radio this is an ICOM 5060 this is an NXDN 2 meter rig KN4 YCD test 1 2 3 4 KN4 YCD test 1 2 3 4 and I'm on NXDN on the Parrot uh, talk group so we have power to the radio the radio is working and as I said right now we're pulling zero current out of the uh, out of the battery so what I'm gonna do is uh, press the magic button and I just cut off the power supply and as you can see now we're pulling 0.3 amps using up four to five watts of power and we are running on the battery at this time um, let me key up again KN4 YCD test, one, two, three, four. KN4 YCD test, one, two, three, four. All right, so it works really well. Um, I didn't even see the radio light flicker. The radio did not reboot. Uh, the switchover was immediate. And uh, let me key up one more time so we can see that we're pulling power out of the battery. KN4 YCD test, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. KN4 YCD clear. So you see we went up to about four, four amps on transmit. KN4 YCD test, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. KN4 YCD clear. All right. And so what will happen now, if I swap the mains power back on, This goes to zero because we're not pulling anything off the battery. K and four YCD test one two three four. K and four YCD test one two three four. All right, so <clears throat> this setup uh, is pretty straightforward. There's really not a lot to it. The radio comes out like I said to here. This is common for the radio and for the battery um, hot our battery ground rather excuse me and then this is the battery positive lead and then the power supply comes in at the back this is hooked up to a Mietti 20 amp hour LifePo battery here is what I have this set on which you can see right there uh, you know uh, again this is kind of a weird awkward test setup because there's a lot of wires and this is not anywhere near a permanent setup obviously um, so the BB30M says in the documentation um, 
to use it with a SLA battery, a lead acid battery. I did some research and I read several articles that said if you have a LifePo charging system, it will work, or a, excuse me, an SLA charging system, it will work just fine on a LifePo. The output power levels that both batteries are looking for on charge is the same. They're within the same range, an SLA and a LifePo, plus which you have the BMS on the actual battery itself to protect it in case of overcharge, which is not really going to be an issue since we're not putting out more voltage than the LifePo will take. Um, so what this device does is, as I'm running on the power supply, which is hooked into mains, this keeps the battery topped off. So this 20 amp hour battery is always going to be charged. Uh, then when, obviously when it swaps over, then I'm running off the battery. So <clears throat> you could leave this running pretty much all the time. Now I don't know that I am going to do that. I will probably put a switch on the battery uh, line just to turn it off so it's not always got power charging it. Um, you know, I'll probably turn it on once a week or something, maybe every month once a month it is a LifePo battery so it's not going to drain down and I don't necessarily need to keep a 20 amp hour battery charged up all the way. Um, you know you could use an SLA battery and it wouldn't really be that much of a consideration however SLA batteries are big and heavy um, I suppose something like a motorcycle battery would probably work fairly well you know as well um, with a 20 amp hour battery on this rig that'll run this thing for a while uh, you know, we were getting, um, we were getting about what, K and 4 YCD test, 1, 2, 3, 4, 54 watts on transmit. K and 4 YCD test, 1, 2, 3, 4. At 4 amps. So a 20 amp hour battery solid will give me 5 hours of transmitting non-stop. And uh, even allowing for FF, FM and not single sideband that's you're not going to be keyed up solid for five hours so you've got easily you know depending on operations minimum five hours maximum probably more like 10 to 15 that's an unscientific wild guess it just depends on how much you transmit and I can't really quantify that anyway that's all I've got for you today guys if you like the video please give me a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you ring the bell so you get notified when I post any new content. Thanks. 73.